yesterday's watch review today. I told him to wait till I was done with my cracker. There's nothing wrong with crackers. It gives me a chance to do a preamble. Um, so as as promised, I wanted to talk about the glycine. This is the this particular model is the GLY GL0217. It's it's amazing. The suggested retail price on this watch is $2,900. $2,900. Now, this is when glycine was still glycine. Uh, I think early this year or late last year, glycine got bought out and all their old models were like spun off. So this is one of the older glycines. Um, but they were they were a lot of money. So this is a recreation, speaking of Vietnam, this is a recreation of the 36 millimeter glycine airman that was really popular with pilots during Vietnam. This is the larger version for modern sensibilities. I just want to say that I got caught again. I came down here to get a can of tomatoes to make tomato sauce. For Show up your favorite brand of tomatoes. <laughs> and then he's like, oh. Like, oh. No, I promised that we would make the video. Not me. There are tomatoes. Woo. Cento. Um, and here I am. So, um, no, I liked her get, I liked getting her unvarnished opinion on a watch. And I figured it's a good place to start. I got ambushed again. Yep. Look at that. $2,900. That's Somebody traded this in for another couple of watches. So here we are. Now you've already seen the box, but there's the yeah, box. Yeah, the box is really cool, but it looks kind of like, um, you know, when you're at like a diner and it has the pegboard game. Oh, cribbage? I don't know. That's what it looks like to me. It looks like a cribbage box. It's nice. It's like dovetailed and everything. Mm -hmm. You're getting something for your $2,900. Well, I told you what it looks like. I, it's got this... Sender an address thing on the top. I have no idea what that's about. Anyway, go on. Okay, so you slide it open. <laughs> oh, actually, well, yeah, that's what. Fine. I don't Am know. I gonna like drop it and kill it? Or no, something? no, you're not. Mm -hmm. So I just like to point out, I did not pay two thousand nine hundred dollars for this watch. I did not. I didn't pay a penny for it. I traded it. Okay, well, it still has its sticker on it. There it is. And can I get the, oh, the strap is in the way. I can't show no, that. No, you just, just, oh, it is? Well, I can pull the thing off. Can you do that? Uh, it comes on this sort of very stiff, thick uh, NATO strap. It's got 22 millimeter lugs. Um, uh, there it is. You can pull the let's pull the protective stuff off of there so you can actually look at it. Okay. Well, let's see. I'm always partial to the the bubbly thingy. Wait, you like the date window? Thank you. Yeah, the bubbly thing. I actually I like the hands on it. The the dauphin hands. They're pretty neat. Okay. Um, the pointy ones. The, I like the pointy. And I like the second hands too. I never really think about hands that much. Um, let me look at the back. Ooh, I like that it has an airplane on the back. That's pretty neat. And I always like the case backs you can see through. You like the display case backs? Thank you. Sorry, Sebastian's outside the door. Um, so generally know. positive so far. Is there anything about it you don't like? I don't like the, the bezel very much. The metal polished. Yeah, I don't like the, the polished one. That's just me, though. What do you think about the size? It's a good size. It's really? not. Yeah. You don't think it's too big? I've seen bigger. I mean, the crazy <laughs> thing is, it's the same size as like a standard diver. I mean, we got okay. you're getting used to those, which are obviously smaller. Uh, okay, so this. Come here. Uh, those two sizes. Yeah, I guess it's bigger. Yeah, it's bigger. A lot bigger, actually. I couldn't wear it. I've got tiny wrists. Yeah, it's the size of like a dive watch, no. uh, like a modern diver. I think it'd be a little nicer if it was still the 36 millimeter, but 36 millimeter is pretty small. If it was like 40, 39 or 40. How big is it compared to a grandfather tuna? Oh, grandfather tunas are gigantic. They're 48 millimeters. I, know, I remember the first time I saw one, it, I, was, I just started laughing because they're so big. Well, I mean, we can do this. We can compare it to a... Um, a 6309, oh yeah, 6309 diver, so we can see the side-by-side -side of this. They're about, in fact, this one looks a little more petite, doesn't it? It's not as fat. No. Also, visually, because the 6309, the dial is smaller, 
it makes it look a little smaller. Also, the black insert, which I think is nicer. The, this has a really big dial, and it's one of the things about a big dial is it makes it just look large. Okay, well, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to break, and then we'll look at it more closely, okay? Thank you for your un, unvarnished opinion. And then I get to finish my cracker and make my tomato sauce. And deal with Mr. Man. And deal with Mr. Man. Okay, so here we go. Um, this is, again, this is the glycine, uh, this is the DC form model, and it's a GLO217. Uh, uh, retail on this was $2,900 originally. They've since been marked down uh, quite a bit. I think you can get these for like 800 bucks now. Uh, the watch, my first impression is... I, I, I had studied more the, the, the 1953 one, which has a slightly different layout. White hands instead of this this um, brushed metal uh, with a big arrow tip. Um, I'll see if I can disperse a, a video, uh, of a picture of that here. It is, it's certainly legible. Um, I think it's a very clean design. I've never been a big fan of these polished bezels, but again, this was something, this is how these came out originally. So I can't complain too much. It's not really a modern thing. Very simple, simple lines, very clean. I like the red date. And actually, um, I also am a fan of the mag date magnifier. I think that's pretty neat. Uh, it's, a, it's a standard watch. Unlike the original, original 1953, it does not have a 24-hour hand here. The 24-hour hand is this silver thing right here. Um, it holds the same functionality for the, 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 the bezel stop, where it's just basically you unscrew this, and it's a friction stop, and you can turn it however you wish, and then you tighten it back down. Very old school, very anachronistic. So that's, that's, that is interesting. It's a high beat movement. This is the Solita, um, Solita 300, uh, uh, W-1. And so it's, uh, basically it's a clone of an ETA 2892, 2894, 2892. Um, let me, hang on, just one second. Let me confirm that. I want to make sure that I, yeah. Solita SW 300-1. It's a clone of the... 2892. That's what I get for not doing research and not being able to remember. I can't remember movement numbers all the time. My numbers get switched around in my head. But from what I've been able to gather, the only main differences really between this and the ETA movement it's based upon is that uh, apparently uh, Salida uses or Salida uses a different hairspring that is uh, eight microns thicker. And so that makes it a little more, um, that's more of a, a high beat thing. Like the Seiko 6159s, they have a much stiffer hairspring, and it provides a lot more sort of oomph as this thing sort of goes back and forth. I mean, it's pretty, isn't it? I like the movement. Obviously, it's a high beat. I haven't looked at the numbers yet. Actually, it might not be a bad idea. Sort of a mess over here. Hang on just one second. Let's do this. Put that there because I was timing something else. Uh, hang on just one second. Let's see what this says. Let's see. Okay, hang on just one second. Start. Let's see what it says. Now, I haven't put this on one before, so. And this is basically a new watch, though. I think it was made a couple of months ago. Wait, really? 182? Let me wind it up. Let's, let's give it some power here. Let's give it the full power. Because I don't think I've touched this for a couple of days. It's supposed to have a 42-hour power reserve. Okay, so there. I just manually wound it. Let's see what it says now. Well, that's better, don't you think? Okay, we're starting to get reasonable numbers now. Aha. Yeah. Come on, baby. Give me the 270s. Yeah. 
it's thinking. Okay, fine. Two sixties. Uh, let's come back here and we'll look at this again. Okay, so I think the numbers are reasonable. Once it's up to full power, two sixties is fine. It was probably down to, gosh, maybe thirty percent power tops. So, I mean, one eighties is not unreasonable. I, I think it's been a couple of days since I powered it up. Uh, it's a screw down crown, which is pretty cool. Now, this is, uh, what was I going to say? Something that's nice about this movement, of course, it has um, Arbor Jewels, top and bottom, and it's a hacker, but that's not to be unexpected. Now, it's going to be, there is something interesting. So this is a 24-hour hand, right? Okay, actually, I'm going to get something. I'm going to be right back. Okay, so I went into my project drawers and I pulled this out. This isn't, just to sort of do a compare and contrast, this is an unrestored example of this watch. I've never done anything with this watch. Um, this is a Seiko 6117 Navigator. Uh, and you can sort of see how Seiko approached this same problem. Having a 24-hour watch with a, this kind of an indicator and this kind of thing with a 24-hour uh, uh, indicator ring. It's a different approach to the same problem. A little more colorful, a little more modern. These were very popular with pilots in Vietnam, too. Uh, so, again, it's a 24, it has a 24-hour hand. It's automatic. It's got date only, uh, and it has the 24-hour wheel, as you can see. Pretty neat. Now, one of the things that sort of... I th I'd say, overall, I like the watch. I, I don't know that I would ever wear it on this strap simply because I don't I don't like NATOs. I just I really don't. Um, so it's just one of those things. I'll need to find something else that might do the job for me. But first, before I do that, I, I did notice something which is a little funky. So uh, this again, this watch, the retail in this watch was two thousand nine hundred dollars. It's like that's like a makeup price range. It's it's real money. So um one of the things that would need to happen is, you know, basic quality control. So I'm going to stop that there. We're going to move this forward. And you can see the 24-hour hand here moving forward. This watch is brand new. It's never been opened. We're coming on midnight here. Uh, you can see the 16 starting to kick over. Date starting to kick over. And we are at... Kicked over midnight. There we are. $2,900 and this 24 hour hand is misaligned. That means that when this was being assembled, the, the, the person assembling it didn't take up the slack of the between the gears uh, and then this hand came misaligned. I mean, that's it's a pretty simple thing to get wrong, but uh, from a QC perspective, that's just it's unforgivable. Um, well, I don't know, it's unforgivable, but it's silly. It's silly. A, a watch that cost $2,900 should never have left the factory like this. As it is, that means I'm going to have to take this brand new watch, and I'm going to have to take the hands apart and, and realign this 24-hour hand here. And that, that shouldn't be the case. That shouldn't happen there. I mean, you can see there that the 24-hour hand is almost, what, it's f almost 42 minutes off where it's supposed to be. Anyway, I'll take that apart at a certain point here, and I'll and I'll I'll fix it. I wish you know it's 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 very it adheres very much to the original design, which is good. I wish that it had more color, like this twenty four hour hand. It's just like you you can see it, but it would be nice if it was actually a lot more legible, like this, which is sort of a, a Rolex style GMT hand with a little arrow on it. You know, usability, legibility, that's important. Overall. I like it. I'll have to do some research to find the right strap for it, and then we'll see how it goes. Okay, thank you for watching this silly video.